Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel and welcome back for part 2 of my tutorial on how to add stencils in Blender. Now in part 1 we covered how to add stencils to simple 3D models that are either untextured or have simple materials without image textures. In this tutorial we're going to dive a little bit deeper, it's also going to get a little bit more complex to show you how to add stencils to any 3D model, no matter what materials or pre-existing image textures they may have applied. As before, in this tutorial, we're going to apply this really cute cat stencil to this Hell Knight's uh, butt. I mean, back and I mean chest. And as before, you'll be able to download all of the files that you need to follow along in the video description. But now I feel like I've waffled on for long enough. Let's jump right into the tutorial. Here we are in Blender. And by the way, I will assume that you have watched the first part of this series or you're at least familiar with the basics of how to do texture painting in Blender and how to add stencils. Now in my scene here, I have two really cool low poly Hell Knight models from Doom. By the way, I didn't create them. I got these ones off BlendSwap created by someone called Nuclid. So thank you very much. This is really cool low poly model of a Hell Knight that I downloaded for the purpose of this tutorial. There's two models in the scene. The left one is the plain untextured one. So I'm going to select it, press H to hide it. The one on the right is the one that I added some textures to just to show you how stenciling works if you are working with a 3D model that has texture images applied to it already. So with the model selected, let's press delete on the numpad to kind of zoom right in. And you can see it's not the greatest textures that I've chosen, but they were 3D available from 3dtextures.me. Great resources, by the way, I'll link you everything down below. So I've just textured this because it makes it a little bit more challenging to add a stencil on top. Now, first off, let's select the model and come into the texture paint workspace. And there's our 3D model right there. Let's come down into the brush settings and let's change the color to something pretty obvious like red and I might make my radius just a little bit smaller. And if you click and draw, you can draw on this model. But what happens is that due to the way the UV mapping works is that that paint shows up everywhere where you don't want it to. And the same would happen with the stencil. If you try to add a stencil here, for one, you are overwriting the actual texture. So this is not an easily undoable thing, but also the UV mapping is all wrong. It's actually impossible at this stage to add a stencil. What we instead need to do, let's Control Z undo that. What we need to do is we need to give this model a second UV map that we can use for stencils. And we need to modify the material themselves so that we can assign a second image texture into which we can draw or apply our stencil into. And that gets blended on top of this base texture as a second layer. Now that is a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to return to the layout workspace first. With this model selected, come down to the properties panel and let's select the object data properties. In here, you'll find a tab for UV maps. Let's expand this. And right now there's a single UV map. However, I want to add a second UV map. So here's a second UV map. Let's rename this one to decal UV map. And we're going to unwrap this model onto this single decal map. So we can just paint and draw onto that. And we won't disturb the actual textures that are already in place. So with that selected, come into UV editing right here. And if you're already in edit mode with the mesh selected, actually let's press A to select everything. On the left hand side, you should see the current UV map layout. Now it expands past the texture because it replicates. So the texture is repeated multiple times across the mesh, which is also why we can't just draw a single decal because it'll get spread onto the rest of the geometry. Now, if you expand the left side, the UV editor view, or you can actually middle mouse button click and hold to drag this menu across. You can see that right now we're showing the UVs for the decal UV map, which is what we want. If you click into this, you can actually show the UV map, the base one as well. The decal UV map we created looks exactly the same. It's just a copy. However, we want that UV map to be different. So make sure you have the decal UV map selected in the UV editor. Make sure you're in edit mode. Press tap with the model selected if you're not already. Make sure you have everything selected by pressing A on your keyboard. Then in the 3D view on the right, come into UV, Smart UV Project. You can leave everything on default or you can tweak it if you want to. Hit OK. Now this is going to lay out all of the geometry of the model into a single texture here. Now if we switch to UV map we're showing, so the decal UV map looks like this. If you switch this over to the UV map, this is the original one. So we now have two distinctly different UV maps and we can use this decal UV map to paint and to apply decals on top of all of the existing textures. Now, the next thing we need to do, let's come back to the layout workspace. With the model selected, come into the material properties and let's select this skin textured material here at the top. Now, if you come down, you may note that the base color 
comes from a gamma node that then uses a leather texture, which is the one we're seeing here. But we don't just want to replace the texture for this base color with a new texture to draw on. Instead, we want to add our new decal texture on top of the existing one. So what I'm instead going to do, let's come to the texture paint workspace. Let's make sure we can center on our model, come up in the tool settings. And it doesn't matter which material you have selected, change your mode from material over to single image because we're going to create a new texture and draw into that and that's our overlay map. So for that, make sure your UV map is the decal UV map we've generated and then we're going to create a new texture. Let's call this one decal underscore text. I'm going to make this pretty big. Maybe I'll give it 5,000 by 5,000. Base color, I'm going to leave at black. Let's hit OK. The model is immediately fully black on the left hand side. In the UV editor, you should see the layout of the UV map we've selected, which is this decal UV map over here in the paintbrush tools. And we're applying it on top of the decal text, which is just black. Now on the right hand side, with the brush tool, we can click and draw. And we can actually draw over the entire model and nothing gets replicated because the UV map we're using is our decal UV map, which maps the entire geometry into that single texture. I hope that makes sense so far. If it doesn't, leave me questions down below. I'm happy to answer those. Let's undo that with Ctrl and Z. And now let's apply the decal. And this works exactly the same way as it did in part one. Let's come down. Let's actually change the color back to white. Expand the texture settings. Let's create a new texture. Let's call this one, I'm going to call this one Cat Stencil. In the properties panel, come all the way down to the bottom tab here, which is the texture properties. Make sure you have your cat stencil texture selected at the top. Leave type on image or movie as we'll be using an image. We have none yet, so simply hit open to open an image. I'm going to select my cute cat PNG again. Double click that. That loads this image into that texture. And now if you return to the tool settings and scroll to the bottom, you can now see now we have this cat texture applied. And if you click and draw, you're essentially going to draw this cat texture onto your 3D model. Now that's not quite the mode we want, so Ctrl and Z. Again, let's change the mapping over to stencil. But if you're familiar with how this works, this shouldn't really come as a surprise. Right click onto the stencil in the 3D view, just drag it in place. Let's actually just rotate the model around a little bit as well, just to make this you know nice and tough looking. So maybe where his heart should be there. Uh, shift, right click, and make this just a little bit smaller. Ctrl and right click, just rotate that a little bit. Control, by the way, on Mac is command, just in case you're wondering. Let's make the radius just a little bit bigger of our brush. And let's paint this cat on his cold hard chest. Let's just zoom in a little. Let's go rotate around a little bit, see what that looks like. Yep, that's not too bad. Let's clear out our texture stencil. And so now this is our stencil texture. Now, just for demonstration purpose, I'm actually going to draw a little white line on the left and right arm as well as around the legs as well down here at the bottom, just to show you how this overlay works. You know, it kind of starts looking a little bit like a Stormtrooper or Darth Vader, which is actually pretty funny if you share my style of humor. Now, if you return to the layout properties, you'll note that none of the decals or stuff we've drawn on shows. It's because we essentially just use this 3D model in the texture paint view to paint onto this new decal texture that we have that sits mapped onto our 3D model with a decal UV map. However, we haven't applied it in any of our shaders. So now comes the fun part. Let's go into the shading tab. Let's just zoom in on our little guy right here. Make sure that you have the skin textured material selected so you can see it down here in the shader editor. So there's three textures, leather roughness, metal pattern metallic and leather normal being fed into this principal BSDF. Now into this base color right now, it's just this leather texture. And here is exactly where we now want to bring in our new texture. So with the cursor over the shade editor, shift and A to add a new node, hit search, search for image because we want to bring in an image texture, open this up and we want to select our decal texture to bring that into this shader graph. Now, if you drag the color and connect that to the base color of the shader, this will look rather funky. And that's because even though we're now applying our texture, we're actually still using the wrong UV map. We're using the standard UV map, not the new one we've created. So we need to apply that different UV map to this decal texture to make sure that that is applied in the same way that we've drawn it onto this 3D model. So with the cursor over the shader edit, shift and A, search, search for UV. There's this UV map 
node here. Let's drop that right in here. And if you click on this selector, you should have the UV map as well as the decal UV map here. Let's select the decal UV map. The output of these UVs goes into the vector input on the decal texture node. And there you go. You now have the cat as well as the lines we've drawn on this model. Now the base texture has disappeared. You still see the roughness because we're still feeding the normals as well as the metallic properties into the material, but the base texture is gone for now because we've, we've disconnected it. But you can now see this texture actually sits properly in here. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to decide how we want to blend this decal texture on top of the base material. First, let's have a very basic mix RGB node to blend the colors of our two texture images that we want to use together. Shift and A with your cursor over the shader editor, hit search. Let's search for the mix RGB node because we have two color values, one from the decal text and one from the leather roughness color. I'm going to drop this on the line that connects the decal text to the base color already. Then color one can come from the decal texture. Color two will come from the original material. And now this factor here controls, if you set this to zero, you see the decal. If you set it to one, you see the base texture. So we now want to control this factor based on the brightness of this decal. So wherever I've painted color into this image, I want it essentially show. The easiest way to do that is to simply connect the output color of your decal texture to this factor input on the mix shader node. So wherever the decal texture is fully opaque and bright, it'll use the decal. Otherwise, it'll use your normal or currently applied texture. So let's drop that in. And that didn't quite work. The cat is kind of a mix of both. Actually, what we need to do is we need to swap these two around. Color one needs to be color two and color two needs to be color one. So there you go. You now have the decals applied on top of the base texture. If you disconnect this color two, you'll just see the base texture. But the moment we plug our decal texture back into the color two pin on the mix RGB node, it gets added on top. Now you can control how this decal looks in more detail. You can also change the blend mode on this node from mix to, for example, something like additive. It just makes it look a little bit brighter. And there's a whole bunch of other options to go. You know, you can go color dodge it and you can divide it which looks very different. I'm just going to leave it on mix for now. But you'll also note that all well, the decal doesn't actually show up on, you know, the darker skin here or the bloody area right there. And that's because we've only modified one material so far. Now we need to go through the others and kind of repeat the same thing. However, to make this easy, I'm actually going to click, drag and select the UV map, the decal texture and the mix shader node. Control C to copy those ones. Let's go to skin dark textured. And here it's exactly the same thing. Base color needs to be combined with the decal overlay. So let's paste all of that in. Let's take the output of this vector or whatever goes into the base color right now. Make that color one. And then the color output becomes our base color. So we're really just blending the decal in here. So now you can see it appear down there as well. Let's do the same with blood textured. Paste our notes in. The color output goes into color one. That color of the mix node goes into the base. So now we can see the full cat and that's just for completeness sake also do that with the claw. So the color goes to color one, color output of that goes into the base color. So all we're really doing here is we're adding this decal texture with its own independent UV map on top of the base texture of our material. And that should work no matter what model you have right there. Now if you're finding that the cat actually looks a little bit transparent here, what you can do, you can actually just add another effect into what controls that factor. So if you go RGB curves, drop that into the color that feeds into this factor here, you can control how bright that gets. So what you can do, for example, with these curves, I can now adjust the brightness of this factor. And this will not work because I'm using the claw material. I want to do this on the blood material. So let's come back to the blood textured material. And this is where I kind of want to add this in. So let's add a curves node. So RGB curves, let's drop that in here, the color output from the decal goes into the color. That color then becomes this factor that mixes and decides which color, which texture should show. And now you can adjust the brightness here and you can see how that cat gets a whole lot more, a whole lot more opaque right away. Let's copy and paste these curves into skin textured as well. Paste that in. Color goes into color. The output of that goes into your factor because we already applied the curves. You can immediately see how much more opaque that cat has become. Let's do that with a dark skin here as well. Paste that in. 
And I should have done that before I copied everything across, but hopefully you get the drift, so let's make that the factor. You can just tweak how strongly that decal is applied. You just need to make sure you do it for all of the materials that you use it. And that is pretty much it. We've now applied a decal. Let's come back to the layout tab so we can see the result of our hard work. You applied a decal on top of a model that has texture images and complex materials defined already. Hopefully you found this useful. Feel free to join the Surface Studio Discord server and share your images of what you've done with slash to this hell night up. Just be keen to see what you guys can come up with or with your own models, whatever you're working on. And of course, leave me comments, questions, anything you have down below or on Discord. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the ride. And hopefully that covered everything you needed to know about how to apply a stencil to a 3D model in Blender. As always, please leave any comments, questions or suggestions down below. And with that, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.